St. Maximus distinguishes different modes of the Holy Spirit's presence in the world. The Holy Spirit, he says, is present in all men without exception, as preserver of all things and quickener of natural seed. But he is particularly present in all those who have the law, calling attention to the transgressions of the commandments and bearing witness to the person of Christ. As for Christians, the Holy Spirit is present in each one of them, making them sons of God. But as giver of wisdom, he is hardly present in them all, but only in those who have understanding. That is to say, in those who by their struggles and labors in God have become worthy of the deifying indwelling of the Holy Spirit. For all those who do not fulfill the will of God have not an understanding heart. Thus, in relation to union with God, the universe is arranged in concentric circles about a center which is occupied by the church, the members of which become sons of God. Nevertheless, this adoption is not the final goal, for there is yet a narrower circle within the church itself, that of the saints, of those who have understanding, who enter into union with God. The church is the center of the universe, the sphere in which its destinies are determined. All are called to enter into the church, for if man is a microcosm, the church is a macroanthropos, as St. Maximus says. It increases and is compounded in history, bringing the elect into its bosom and uniting them to God. The world grows old and falls into decay, while the church is constantly rejuvenated and renewed by the Holy Spirit, who is the source of its life. At a given moment, when the church has attained to the fullness of growth determined by the will of God, the external world, having used up its vital resources, will perish. As for the church, it will appear in its eternal glory as the kingdom of God. It will then stand revealed as the true foundation of the creatures raised up in incorruptibility to be united to God, who will be all in all but some will be united by grace, others apart from grace, according to St. Maximus. Some will be deified by the energies which they have acquired in the interior of their being. Others will remain without, and for them the deifying fire of the spirit will be an external flame, intolerable to all those whose will is exposed to God. The church then, is the sphere within which union with God takes place in this present life, the union which will be consummated in the age to come after the resurrection of the dead. All the conditions which are necessary that we may attain to union with God are given in the church. This is why the Greek fathers frequently liken it to the earthly paradise in which the first men were to have gained access to the state of deification. Assuredly, human nature no longer possesses its primitive immortality and incorruptibility, but death and corruption are become the way toward eternal life. For Christ united himself all through which death reaches, and through death has overthrown death. We enter into eternal life, says St. Gregory of Nyssa, through baptism and resurrection. Baptism, the image of the death of Christ, is already the beginning of our resurrection, a way out from the labyrinth of death. The body of Christ, to which Christians are united through baptism, becomes, according to St. Athanasius, the root of our resurrection and our salvation.